Come with me, toy fans. When Hasbro first launched the original G.I. Joe toy line way back in 1964, the company chose to focus on four branches of the United States military, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force and the Marines. Each branch had a central action figure with 21 movable parts and a basic uniform, and the range also featured a huge assortment of varied equipment sets so a child could prepare their G.I. Joe for all manner of military operations. When British toy company Palatoy obtained a licence from Hasbro to bring their G.I. Joe toy line to the United Kingdom in 1966, they renamed the brand as Action Man, yet they only introduced the soldiers, sailors and airmen. The Marines were conspicuously absent from the Action Man range, and while many of the Marine equipment sets were offered to the Action Soldiers, British children did miss out on the opportunity to play with several of the cool looking camouflaged accessories that were the signature of the G.I. Joe Action Marines. These figures and equipment sets also evoked my memories of watching films like The Sands of Iwo Jima, with all the troops dressed in the distinctive Marine Corps uniforms of World War II. So when I became a full-fledged Action Man collector, I also developed an obsession for completing the 1960s G.I. Joe Action Marine range, because I love the look of these uniforms, and I've always considered this branch to be the ones that got away. One, two, three, four, United States Marine Corps! One, two, three, four, United States Marine Corps! My Corps! My Corps! Your Corps! Your Corps! Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel, where we're obsessed with bringing you the true history of vintage toys and action figures. Hasbro's original G.I. Joe toy line revolved around the concept of a 12 inch tall movable action figure that could be accessorised with a variety of weapons and equipment that was sold on separate card backs. The Action Marine was made available in a colourful box with artwork depicting the Marine paratrooper. The figure is dressed in a camouflage shirt and pants, a pair of tall brown boots and a fatigue cap and he wears a dog tag around his neck. Also included in the box is a variety of stickers and leaflets, the most important of which is the Marine Manual that provided instructions on how to correctly equip your Action Marine for combat. If you acquired all the different Action Marine sets available in 1964 and 1965, you could have your G.I. Joe Marine wear his dress blue uniform, or equip him for a beachhead assault or a communications role. You could also have a Marine paratrooper and a medic. In order to kit out your G.I. Joe Action Marine for a beachhead assault, you need equipment from a number of different sets. I've armed my beachhead assault marine with an M1 rifle, a bayonet and some hand grenades. These bayonets are extremely fragile and very challenging to acquire today. This marine wears a combat belt with ammo pouches on both sides and a canteen and cover is carried at the rear. The camouflage helmet was made available on a separate smaller card and the set came with some scaled down foliage that could be attached to the helmet netting but it doesn't really display very well. Did you wake up this morning with a piss pot on your head? The field pack is a wonderfully engineered accessory with a complex design that allows G.I. Joe to carry all of his essential combat equipment. Inside the main compartment, this marine has stowed his mess kit and sleeping bag, the latter of which was only available on an action soldier card back. At the base of the field pack, there are straps to carry the camouflage poncho from the communication set, and strapped across the top and down the sides of the pack is the camouflage beachhead assault tent. The instructions provided in the Marine Manual explain how to correctly roll up this tent with the tent poles positioned inside, prior to attaching this piece of equipment to the field pack. The Beachhead Assault tent comes with a number of pegs and poles, so it can actually be set up for use, but these are quite challenging to display. Finally we have the entrenching tool and cover that is carried on the outside of the field pack and held in place with a strap and loop. The entrenching tool is another fragile accessory that features a handle that needs to be unscrewed so that the blade can be folded open. You then need to re-tighten the handle so that G.I. Joe can use the entrenching tool to dig a foxhole. Also included in the Beachhead Assault tent set is the fearsome Action Marine Flamethrower. The terrifying M2 Flamethrower was used extensively in the Pacific Theatre to combat strongly fortified Japanese positions and the G.I. Joe version features three backpack mounted cylinders with a hose connected to a two handled nozzle, with the forward handle being fitted with a trigger mechanism. Given the fact that G.I. Joe cannot carry the flamethrower and the field pack at the same time, most collectors choose to have two versions of the Beachhead Assault Marine in their collection, so they can display both pieces of equipment. While the US Marines are known for their expertise with amphibious landings, the G.I. Joe Marine can also be equipped for an airborne insertion. The Action Marine Paratrooper is equipped with a parachute pack complete with harness, yet strangely the paratrooper sets released in 1964 and 1965 did not actually come with parachutes. 
It wasn't until Hasbro released the fighter pilot set in 1967 that a working G.I. Joe parachute was finally brought into the range. The Marine paratrooper is armed with an M1 carbine because the compact size of these rifles are better suited to parachute jumping than the larger M1 Garand rifle. On his belt the paratrooper carries a canteen and cover and a small first aid kit and a knife and scabbard is strapped to his boot. Communications are key to winning any battle and when the G.I. Joe Marines are in heavy combat they use the communication set to send and receive orders. Acquiring this set is the only way to add the camouflage poncho to your collection and this G.I. Joe is equipped with a field radio complete with handset and antenna, a wire roll, a map and map case and a field telephone. The field telephone is carried in a vinyl satchel with a shoulder strap and the earliest version of this accessory has become one of the most highly sought after rarities of the early G.I. Joe era. The first edition of the field telephone featured a green two-tone camouflage pattern which is exceedingly rare when compared to the more common brown and green variation. The Marine Medic proved quite popular when first released and the set brought a new level of realism to the G.I. Joe line with children being able to not only act out the glories of war but the horrors of combat as well. I'm unsure why Hasbro decided to name this set the Medic because in both the US Navy and in the Marine Corps medics are called corpsmen but that criticism aside this is an excellent set with numerous small accessories that make it challenging to find complete. The Marine Medic wears a pair of armbands and a helmet and he carries a flag all of which are adorned with the Red Cross symbol. This G.I. Joe is issued with a medic bag in which he can carry a variety of splints and bandages and he is equipped with a crutch, a stethoscope and a plasma bottle for treating the wounded. Finally we have a fold out stretcher that the Joes can use for carrying wounded marines back to the aid station. Rounding out the first wave of G.I. Joe action marine sets we have the dress parade uniform. Often referred to by US marines as the dress blues uniform, G.I. Joe looks stunning in this blue and red ensemble complete with peaked cap and white belt and rifle. This was the first parade uniform to be issued to Hasbro's G.I. Joe, with the West Point, Annapolis and Air Cadets not being introduced to the line until 1967. The Marine Dress Parade set was incredibly popular throughout 1964 and 1965 and as such it is now one of the easiest to acquire G.I. Joe uniforms from that period, yet it is still worth adding to your collection due to its eye-catching appearance. In 1966, Hasbro expanded the Action Marine range with the inclusion of the demolition set. Now, a new world of fun with G.I. Joe Marine. Just look at this one. Now your G.I. Joe can clear the beach of mine with the new working demolition set, complete with a mine detector. And with all the different gear you can get for G.I. Joe, you'll want the official G.I. Joe footlocker. It holds your equipment keeps your uniforms in order. G.I. Joe is the greatest. Nothing else is G.I. Joe. Boy, oh boy, it's a Hasbro toy. The Marine Demolition Set features a mine detector and an intricately woven harness that G.I. Joe can use to carry the mine detector's backpack, and attached to that is a headset. The Marine Demolition also includes three metal mines, and when the Action Marine waves the detector over one of the mines, a small bulb on the top of his backpack lights up. This was quite advanced technology to include in a toy in 1966 and Hasbro should be commended for their efforts to bring additional play value into the G.I. Joe line at that time. The demolition set was the only noteworthy addition to the Action Marine line in 1966. However, 1967 would see the introduction of two of the best and rarest Marine sets in the entire line. The highly desirable Tank Commander set offered a nice simulation leather jacket with a fur lined collar and cuffs along with a helmet and tripod mounted radio that were unique to this set. The Marine Tank Commander also includes a belt with pistol and holster, a 30 caliber machine gun with tripod and an ammo box. Fire! Good. The odd thing about this set though is that Hasbro never offered up a tank for him to command, so this Marine had to settle for the armored car produced under license by the Irwin Toy Company. Before we get into the details of what I consider to be the best Action Marine set of them all, let's discuss a few of the smaller accessory cards. The M60 machine gun is a great accessory which comes complete with a working bipod, an ammo belt and an ammo box. Yet it is a strange addition to the Action Marine range because the line was firmly planted in World War II and this weapon did not see service with the US military until the late 1950s. The other accessory that is definitely worth adding to your vintage G.I. Joe collection, if you can find one, is the mortar. 
This is a complex accessory made up of a number of parts, with the main barrel slotting into a base plate and being held in a firm firing position via a guide rod attached to a bipod. This guide rod has several holes and the elevation of the mortar can be set by adjusting the position and inserting the pin in the desired location. The mortar also comes with three shells which can actually be fired using the spring-loaded mechanism situated at the bottom of the barrel. Finally, we have the most highly desirable set in the entire G.I. Joe Action Marine range, the Marine Jungle Fighter. This set is very popular with collectors due to the rich teal colour of the uniform that is adorned with miniature woven badges that are positioned above each breast pocket with chevrons on each sleeve. The Marine Jungle Fighter also comes with a staggering amount of equipment, including a flamethrower, which now features a camouflage paint scheme, a belt that carries a canteen and a machete, a field telephone, a campaign hat, a combat knife and an M16 rifle. This rifle indicates that the Marine Jungle Fighter is likely from the Vietnam War era, as opposed to World War II. So perhaps this is why Hasbro brought the M60 machine gun into the line, because it does look good with the Jungle Fighter. This set has a lot going for it. It looks terrific, especially with all the patches on the tunic, and it is loaded to the gills with weapons and equipment. And this is one leather neck that I am very proud to display in my collection. The United States Marine Corps is most well known for their exploits during the Pacific Campaign of World War II. And during that conflict their main enemy was the Japanese Army, so Hasbro made sure to offer up a Japanese Imperial soldier in 1966 as part of their Soldiers of the World range. Now a new world of fun with G.I. Joe Action Soldiers of the World. Six different fighting men from six foreign countries. Australian jungle fighters. Russian infantryman, British commando, Japanese imperial soldier, German infantryman, French underground fighter, the G.I. Joe Combat Series. Add new realism, new dimension to your play battle. Add new fun to your world of G.I. Joe with the exciting action soldiers of the world. Boy, oh boy, the Hasbro toy! Coincidentally, the Japanese soldier was also omitted from the British Action Man range, along with the Action Marines. In fact, the only US Marine to appear in the Action Man range was the USMC uniform that was released as part of the Internationals range in 1979. While this video is focused on the G.I. Joe Marines of the 1960s, there is one other figure that I'd like to mention. And that is the Navajo Code Talker that was released by Hasbro in 1999. I wanted to include this figure in the video for two reasons. Firstly, because the figure was gifted to me by a supporter of the channel, and secondly, because I find the story of the Navajo Code Talkers to be so interesting. During World War II, the Japanese were excellent code breakers, yet one code they could never break was the Native American Navajo language. By the war's end, there were approximately 400 active Navajo Code Talkers in the Pacific Campaign, and they were instrumental in practically every marine action in the Pacific, from Guadalcanal to Okinawa and I think it is truly wonderful that they've been represented here in the G.I. Joe toy line. So far on my collecting journey, there is only one G.I. Joe Action Marine that I'm yet to acquire, and that is the talking G.I. Joe Action Marine that was released by Hasbro in 1967. I would love to add this figure to my collection, but I would have to get a boxed one, due to the artwork being one of the most eye-catching in the series, but they don't come up often, and a purchase of this figure will likely be brutal on my wallet. As popular as the G.I. Joe Action Marines were, we would never see any additional Marine theme sets in the line after 1968. And that is because in 1969 Hasbro started to take G.I. Joe in a more adventure themed direction to avoid the anti-war sentiment that was growing from the public's opposition to the conflict that was raging in Vietnam at that time. Despite only being available in toy stores for four years, Hasbro produced such a wide variety of Action Marine sets that they created a quite expansive line and it is both a fun and challenging series to try and collect today. With such standout pieces as the Dress Parade Marine and the Marine Jungle Fighter, and the sleek camouflage uniformity of the rest of the series, the G.I. Joe Action Marines display extremely well, and the entire collection is littered with high quality, well detailed and brilliantly engineered equipment and accessories. Filled with guts and glory, these are some of the very best offerings to come from the early years of G.I. Joe and they are proof that they just don't make them like they used to. So thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, you can click the links up here to check out some of our other videos featuring 1960s G.I. Joe. Or subscribe to the channel by clicking here, or consider supporting us on Patreon, 
where you'll get access to hours of exclusive content. I'm Tony from Analog Toys and I'll see you in the next video.